What's going on guys, it is Pangino here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the 2020 Ultimate FPS Increase Guide for Rainbow Six Siege. This 2020 updated guide is going to be providing you guys with the very best gameplay experience possible, with the latest tweaks, optimizations, and other things you can set with inside of the game for the lowest level of input lag, the best FPS possible for your system, whilst maintaining a good visual fidelity, or you can go all out and go for completely competitive settings. You should be seeing some phenomenal results across the board, regardless of your system specs. So if you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with the results, please leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously alongside leaving your results questions queries and other suggestions for fps tips tricks or tweaks in that comment section down below is it is always fantastic to hear from you guys and if you guys do enjoy my content and wish to stay up to date with the channel please do consider pressing the subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly or whenever a video goes live on my channel with all that said and done let's get straight on into the video for a quick recommendation before continuing on with this video to ensure that you guys get the best results it is highly recommended to make sure that you're actually running on the latest update of windows 10 as the latest updates of windows 10 have actually enabled some features with inside of the operating system System, and some exclusive features with inside of the latest version of Windows, which you cannot apply to older versions. To update Windows 10, it's completely easy and free to do. First of all, it's recommended to check which version of Windows you're running on to see if there is an update available. For this, navigate to the bottom left-hand side, click on the Windows key, type in WinVer, just like so, then click on the WinVer command. As you can see, I'm running on version 1909. This is the minimum version you should be running on whilst watching this video. If you're running on a version older or less than 1909, so if you're running on something like 1806 or lower, make sure that you do go ahead and update Windows 10 it's very simple and easy to do. Go ahead and press OK. To check if there are any updates available for your operating system, go to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows key, type in Windows space update just like so, then click on the check for updates utility. With inside of here then go into check for updates and as you can see here on my updated gaming PC the brand new version of Windows 10 version 2004 as the time of recording this video is now available. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is click on download and install, follow the updater, update Windows to the latest version and continue on. So to jump straight into the gaming optimizations, first of all what we're going to go ahead and do is actually now get down into Uplay or Steam or whichever platform you're using to boot into Rainbow Six and we're simply going to boot into the game. Go ahead and press Alt and Tab to tab out of the game whilst it's running in the background. Then navigate down to your task bar, right click, then open up Task Manager. With inside of here, go over to the Processes tab, go ahead and right click on Rainbow Six, then click on Open File Location. Once we're inside of this folder, we then need to apply a quick optimization fix to the game EXE or application itself. Right click, go down to Properties, go to the Compatibility tab, ensure that Disable Full Screen Optimizations is checked, click on Change ID DPI, override the high DPI scaling behavior at the bottom, press OK, apply and OK. Again, we're going to repeat the optimization for the Rainbow Six underscore Vulkan application, so right click, properties, compatibility, disable full screen, change our DPI, override, apply, OK and apply. Now what's inside of this folder is we need to navigate back with inside of this folder later on in the video. So what we're going to be going ahead and doing to make sure that we can navigate back with inside of here easily and quickly is to go up to the navigation bar at the top here, which is the destination of this folder and double click on the blank space. So this becomes editable. With inside of here, go ahead from the right hand side all the way to the left, right click and select copy. We can then use that later on. This now leads us on to some GPU specific optimizations to help boost FPS and once again, reduce input lag. These are incredibly important and should be followed precisely to ensure that you guys get the best result. You right click anywhere on your desktop and you'll either be seeing the NVIDIA control panel or the AMD Radeon settings panel. Regardless of your manufacturer make or model of the graphics card, GPU manufacturers often put out graphics card updates around about once every month or so, which will help boost performance towards games, fix any issues you might be experiencing. The latest GPU drivers are especially important if you guys are running on the latest versions of Windows 10, as coupled with the latest version of Windows 10, the latest driver can actually enable a new optimization with inside of the Windows GPU settings itself which cannot be accessed on older drivers and to install them simply navigate into the description down below and click on the corresponding link whether you guys are running on an nvidia geforce card or if you're running on an amd radeon card for nvidia users you'll be brought to the geforce driver update utility found here click on the automatic driver updates utility select download now download the program open it up it will then detect and install the latest graphics card driver and get you up and running and good to go for you amd radeon users it's a very similar process you'll be heading over to the amd radeon support page found here go to the auto detect and install radeon graphics drivers for windows utility click on download now and once again download the program open it up it will then detect your gpu and get you running on the latest driver update once you've installed the latest graphics card driver update it is recommended to quickly perform a quick system restart by taking yourself to the bottom left hand side clicking on the windows key right clicking on the power option and selecting restart we then need to go ahead and apply optimized settings to those GPU drivers with inside of the NVIDIA control panel or the AMD Radeon settings panel. For the best settings for these, there are two ways to go about doing this. You can either follow the on-screen video now, or you can take yourself into the description down below and download the FPS pack provided using one of the download links, download the pack, 
put it onto your desktop, you'll then be given this folder found here called RB6 FPS by Panj. Again, this pack is not 100% needed to follow along with this video, it just makes things a little bit easier and more convenient. So if you do wish to go with the pack, go ahead and right click on the pack, then select extract here. For the best GPU settings for your graphics cards, you can either choose to use the FPS increase pack provided, or you can follow the on-screen settings after this. For those of you that want to follow along with these simple screenshots, simply navigate inside of the FPS increase pack provided, go inside of the GPU settings folder, click on the corresponding folder for which GPU you have installed, so for me that's an Nvidia GeForce card, then when inside of here you'll be met with a plethora of screenshots, it will show you easily and clearly how to follow along with all of the settings and how to open up your control panel, which settings to set up, just simply go through all of those screenshots until all of the settings are applied as shown, and we're then good to go. If you don't wish to follow those screenshots, for Nvidia users, right click on your desktop and open up the Nvidia control panel. We can start off by going to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview, ensure that the middle option of 3D image settings is checked, then go down to the bottom right hand side and press apply, then navigate over to manage 3D settings. With inside of here, I'd recommend using image sharp setting this to around about 33 to 50% like so, making sure that GPU scaling is also disabled, press OK, then simply pause the video, copy all of the settings shown on screen here, we'll then scroll down, pause the video once again and copy all of the settings with inside of this panel, and last but not least, scroll all the way down and apply all of the settings with inside of this panel as well. Whilst you're going through those settings, for OpenGL rendering GPU, ensure that you go into the drop down menu and set this to your graphics card, as the graphics card name will be different for you, depending on which GPU you have installed. Once that's then been set, go down to the bottom right hand side and press apply, then navigating over to configure surround and physics, go over to the right hand side to physics settings, go to the drop down menu and set this to your graphics card as well, then navigate to the bottom right hand side and once again press apply then navigating down to adjust desktop size and position for those of you that are not running on any sort of custom resolution or lower resolution and you're just running on your monitor's native resolution i'd recommend coming down and setting no scaling and applying that option as this disables all types of gpu scaling which can reduce input latency and if you're not using custom resolutions you do not need scaling on anyway for those of you that do use gpu scaling leave this at the default setting once that's then been done go to the bottom right hand side press apply and we're then good to go and for those of you running on AMD Radeon graphics cards, go ahead and right click on your desktop, open up the AMD Radeon software panel, go up to the gaming tab, go to games, then go to global graphics. To start off with inside of here, it's recommended to have Radeon anti-lag enabled. We can then go down to Radeon image sharpening, enabling this and setting it to around about 30 to 50%. Experiment around with this as it's mainly personal preference, but it's definitely recommended to have enabled. Radeon chill should be enabled if you're on an ultra low end laptop that has overheating issues or a desktop which has overheating issues. Otherwise, disable this. Wait for vertical refresh should be switched to always off. Go down to the advanced section. Anti-aliasing should be set to use application settings. Anti-aliasing method to be set to multi-sampling. Morphological anti-aliasing disabled. Anastropic filtering disabled. Texture filtering quality performance. Surface format optimization should be enabled. Tessellation mode should be switched to AMD optimized. OpenGL triple buffering disabled. We can then go ahead and exit out of our AMD Radeon settings and continue on. We can then apply some optimizations towards the graphics card with inside of Windows itself, regardless of your GPU manufacturer, make or model. Navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, type in GPU space settings, then click on the graphics settings tab. And if you've updated your Windows to the latest version, alongside running the latest version of your graphics card drivers, and if you have compatible hardware, if you have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling with inside of here available to you, make sure that you do turn this to the on position, as this allows the graphics card to manage its own on built memory pool, reducing input latency and improving performance. You can then apply a quick optimization for everyone watching this video, regardless of your system specs, by navigating down to the Browse button, clicking on where it says Browse. We can then navigate into the installation directory for Rainbow Six Siege. The navigation bar at the top to our search directory, click on this search becomes editable, remove everything with inside of there by using backspace, right click and then select paste. This should then paste in the game installation directory in which we copied earlier on in the video, then go ahead and press enter. We need to add the Rainbow Six and Rainbow Six Vulkan applications with inside of here. So first of all, start up with Rainbow Six, press add, then go to browse once again, then go down to Rainbow Six Vulcan and click on add. With inside of it, go to the Rainbow Six applications, go to options and set to high performance. Go ahead and press save, then go down to the other Rainbow Six application we added, options, high performance and save. We can then apply a very quick optimization to Windows itself to boost performance with inside of the operating system. To do this, navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, type in this PC just like so, right click on this PC and go to properties. With inside of it, navigate over to the advanced system settings on the left hand side, then go to the advanced tab, go to performance, 
performance, click on settings, but then gonna go down to adjust for best performance, click this option, press apply, press okay again, and we can then exit out of this PC. We can then apply a very quick optimization built with inside of Windows to the hard drives or SSDs in which you have your game installed to. So navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button once again, and this time just type in optimize. You'll then see the option for defragment and optimize drives. With inside of here, it's best of all to do this for all of the drives on your PC, but you can just do it for the specific drive you have the game installed to if you know which drive it is. So start off, go ahead with C drive or click on the drive that you have your game installed to, then we get to the right hand side and click on optimize. Once that's then been optimized, we can then go ahead down to the next drive, click on analyze, then click on optimize, and we can proceed to do this for all of the drives with inside of here. Hard drives will take longer to complete this task than SSDs, and it's recommended to come back with inside of here and do this around about once every month or so. Once you guys have done that for all of your drives, go ahead and press close. We can then apply another quick tweak, which comes in the form of system maintenance as well. This is to go to the bottom left hand side, click on the windows button, type in percent T E M P percent, just like so, then press enter. This will bring you into the windows temporary folder, which is basically the overall Windows dump for all programs and files and apps on your PC. This folder is not automatically cleaned out by Windows and all of your caching files, excess files and rubbish gets dumped inside of this folder. Depending on the age of your Windows installation, this folder can sometimes be in excess of 80 plus gigabytes. So what we're going to be doing to remove all of this clutter is to go from the top to the bottom, highlight and drag, right click everything with inside of here, select delete. You'll then be met with this prompt. Click do this for all current items, then hit skip. If that prompt comes up again, make sure that you do click that and the only files and folders left with inside of here will be the only ones Windows is actually using. It's recommended to repeat that step around about once every month or so to stay on top of your system maintenance, freeing up space in your C drive, and giving yourself a faster PC. We can then apply a very quick tweak and change to Discord to ensure that you guys running on higher end PCs get better FPS. For this optimization, go down to Discord, go to the bottom left hand side, click on your user settings cog. First of all, we're going to be going over to the overlay tab, ensuring that Discord enable in-game overlay is actually unchecked like mine is. Then navigate to the bottom left hand side to the appearance tab, scroll all the way down to the bottom, to the advanced section, go to hardware acceleration and ensure once again that hardware acceleration is also turned off on medium to high end PCs. This now leads us on to the last and final optimizations before we boot into the game and finalize our in-game settings to completely optimize the entire experience. For this first of all what we're going to be doing is navigating to the bottom right hand side clicking on the task icon tray and first of all closing out of any programs and applications we do not need running in the background and it's recommended to repeat this step every single time you go to play the game. Once you guys have done that we then lastly need to go into the FPS pack provided or alternatively if you're not using the FPS pack, go over to Google, either Google search ISLC, or go into the FPS increase pack and drag this folder onto your desktop. Once the folder is on your desktop, go inside of it. You'll then be met with the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner, or ISLC. This is a simple two-in-one optimization program for all games and workloads with inside of Windows. The first part of the program helps you keep a reserved pool of RAM in the background by freeing up your standby list and keeping reserved memory free so the game doesn't run into any bottlenecks. The second part of the program comes in the form of a timer resolution program. This is a simple tweak which allows you to lower the Windows timer, which can reduce overall input latency between the game application, operating system and the hardware you have installed to your PC, helping you achieve much higher FPS and a drastic decrease in overall input latency, leaving you with a much snappier and responsive feeling game, as well as higher FPS. So to set up and install the program, double click on the ISLC application, just like so, then select yes. The task icon tray, click on the green monitor found here and the program will open up just like so. For the first box you need to set this to 1024. For the second box, you need to set this value to half of your overall system memory found up here in the top. As you can see, I have a total system memory of 32,699 megabytes. Simply half this number, so for me that's going to be 16,000. Then navigate over to the right hand side, click on enable custom time resolution, go to the wanted time resolution box, set the value of 0 0.50, then use the delete key to remove all of the other values. Then go down to the ISLC polling rate, set this to 500 for high end gaming PCs and 1000 for low end gaming PCs or anything in between. Once that's then set up, go to the right hand side, click on start, and as you can see now, my standby list has gone down by 10 plus gigabytes. Then go over to purge standby list, minimize the program and leave it running, and we're then good to go. Once the ISLC program is then running, what we need to go ahead and do is go into our preferred launcher. For me, that's going to be Uplay, but if you guys have it on Epic or Steam, navigate into the launcher. If you're running this through the Uplay system, make sure that you go over to the play button and ensure that you're running Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vulcan. Make sure that you are using the Vulcan API option every single time you boot the game, as this can offer some phenomenal performance increases alongside enabling a setting in which we're going to be setting up with inside of the game which is exclusive to the Vulkan API mode which you cannot set on the standard version which can drastically boost our FPS in every single scenario with inside of the game. For those of you that have the game on the Epic launcher go over to Epic, go over to your library and because I don't have Rainbow Six on Epic I'm going to be demonstrating this on a different game but simply navigate over to Rainbow Six with inside of Epic, click on the three dots next to it, you'll then have the option with inside of it to launch 
the game in Vulcan mode. And for any of you that are running the game through Steam, navigate over to Rainbow Six with inside of Steam, right click, go to properties, go over to the right hand side to the betas, go down to none, go into the drop down menu and again you'll be seeing somewhere along with inside of here to enable the Vulcan API mode. Click on the Vulcan API mode for the game, press close, then go ahead and boot into the game as normal. I'm going to be giving you guys a very quick optimization for you guys running on the laptop. To do this it's recommended to have a HDMI plugged into the laptop or whichever display out you have available in the laptop, have it plugged into an external monitor, then what you'll simply do is follow the on-screen directions found here to disable the laptop screen so the laptop screen is completely blacked out and the laptop is then completely displayed on a second monitor. You will find that you'll be getting better FPS using this step on almost every single laptop out there. Once you guys have booted into the main menu of the game, take yourself to the top right hand side to the settings icon, click on options. We can start off with the display tab with inside of here. Go over to resolution and set this to your monitor's native resolution, which is typically going to be the max option with inside of here. Once you guys are done with inside of there, go over to display mode, make sure that this is set to full screen, then go down to refresh rate and ensure that refresh rate is completely maxed out at your highest option. Make sure that vSync is disabled down with inside of here, you should never be using vSync. Widescreen letterbox should also be turned off and field of view can be set to anything you like. Once you guys are done with inside of there, go to the bottom right side and press apply. We can then go over to the graphics options tab and these optimizations are incredibly important so make sure that you follow along with the game settings which I'm going to be showing off now as closely as possible for the best results. Starting off with texture quality. If you guys want the best FPS and you don't care how the game looks, go with low. Texture filtering should be set to anastropic 8 times or 16 times depending on your system specs and your desired visual fidelity. I'm going to be going with 8 times. LED quality should be set to low for the best FPS. Shading quality should be set to low. Shadow quality should be set to low for low end systems but for those who want the best competitive advantage, go with medium, reflection quality should be set to low, ambient occlusion should be switched off, lens effects should be switched off, zoom in depth of field should be off, then going down to anti-aliasing. This is going to be one of the most important optimizations you can apply with inside of this entire video. For this we're actually going to be switching this over to TAA. Once inside of TAA, the option for adaptive render scaling target FPS will become available. It's recommended to ramp this all the way up to 400, then go down to TAA sharpness and set this to around about between 40 and 75%, depending on what your visual preference is. I personally like to go with about 50%. What this option basically does is it allows the game to dynamically change the rendering resolution to match the targeted FPS in which you're looking for. This will drastically improve your FPS across the board, it will bring up those 0.1% load times, and a significant bump to average FPS as well. You can lower this number if you wish to do so if you want your game to look better for longer, but it's recommended to ramp this up to 400 and see how you get on. If the game ends up looking a bit too blurry for you, try lowering it down to about 200. I and mean, if you do not wish to use this optimization and you notice that your game is slightly too blurry for your liking it sometimes depending on your system specs and you want to turn this off, just come back with inside of anti-aliasing and switch this over to the off position. Even if you're running on an ultra old potato laptop, make sure that you do run on TAA, 400 FPS, TAA sharpness enabled. We can then go ahead and either run a benchmark in the bottom right hand side, or we can just go ahead and jump straight on into the game as that has finalized our optimizations with inside of this video. And there you guys have it. That is the ultimate FPS increase guide for Rainbow Six Siege with inside of 2020. Please leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously. And if you guys do let me know of your results, questions, queries, or suggestions for other content in that comment section down below, it'll be deeply appreciated. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Pangino, and I'll see you guys in the next one.